Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itasaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. Hey, Phil, we got Joel Saxon here for a look at some really interesting wind ideas. And the first one is from Ventus Engineering. And it has to do with a monitoring system for wind turbines which uses multiple data streams. Uh, and looking at generator power output, mechanical measurements, torque, cell direction, and some meteorological conditions. And this is all processed real time using a computer to then assess where the rotor and, and the blade should be to improve power production and the condition of the tower. So it, it's using a combination of, from what I can tell, SCADA, LIDAR, and a lookup camera uh, to watch the rotor, essentially. and. And Phil, when I reviewed this uh, patent, I thought, man, this seems pretty complicated to to do this. Is this is this idea going to move forward? You think this? So this company that's developed this concept, um, they are trying to commercialize it. And they the real interesting thing about this, and the reason I wanted to talk about it on the show was the this combination of the lookup camera. Um, combined with SCADA data and LIDAR is is a little unique. So the lookup camera idea for um, helping to improve rotor imbalance or, or pitch calibration issues, that's been done for, I don't know, about 12 or 13 years now um, in the industry. Um, obviously, using a nacelle-mounted LIDAR is not a new idea, and, and certainly SCADA data monitoring, not a new idea either. But the combination of all those, I don't think has actually been done before in this kind of specific implementation where they are intentionally trying to, um, you know, visualize any kind of issues that might um, cause these kind of imbalances that would impact, adversely impact performance. So this is a, it's potentially complicated, but it's also a level of sophistication that the industry is now capable of of um, implementing because we've got a reasonable degree of maturity with all those three different concepts. So again, the SCADA data, the lidar system, and the lookup camera. So Joel, I what what do you think about the the commercial viability of this? So this to he, to me is a CMS system on steroids that has multiple sensors and can give the operator more data. So I think that there is a, there's definitely a possibility for back office engineers and people that are responsible for the operation of these turbines, a safe operation and efficient operation of turbines, to use something like this. Our next idea comes from Stefan Klumper uh, for General Electric over in Spain, and it deals with failures in the blade heating elements. And the one thing we know about blade heating elements is they like to break. And when they break, they can become very difficult to detect where that break occurs. So what uh, this concept is, is they're, they're looking for that failure location, identifying it using electrical means by applying a voltage and, and looking for some leakage currents and then changes in capacitance, which will tell you that, that the system has uh, degraded in some means. But then also using uh, uh, a method of sending voltage impulses down the heating system and then timing those pulses when those pulses get reflected back as to where on the blade this damage may occur. And this concept, Bill, has been used in lightning, uh, lightning protection systems for brakes and lightning protection systems, but this makes a little more sense to me using it for heaters. Yeah, and just to be clear what this idea is around is for the ice protection technology, usually they have some kind of heating elements located on... Um, the leading edge or potentially other, um, you know, to a smaller degree, other sections of the blade that are, that are going to be prone to icing. Um, but, you know, the reason why we are tracking this at Intel Store is as part of our, you know, IP prism capability, we like to be able to try to identify uh, clever ideas that we think are going to, um, you know, not necessarily in this case, like be game changing, but something that will definitely make the lives of people owning and operating wind turbines easier. I think this falls into that category because you're you're talking about having that detection capability where if you find that there's a fault, 
you don't have to go through and strip off the entire heating element off the blade and then reapply it later. You can just go find and localize where that fault is and make your repairs a lot more uh, cost and time efficient. So I think this is a really clever one. It's reducing technician time in the field because these things are hard enough to repair when you get to them, but you got to find it. And now with longer blades and longer blades, you know, if you're talking some of the newest heating systems going up in the Nordic country on 70 and 80 meter long blades, it could take a, te a team of technicians or a couple guys on ropes or whatever it may be a long, you know, a day to find the break or two days to find the break. And then you got to dig into the repair and the repair is enough of a pain. So uh, when you're dealing with something like this, making field operations more efficient absolutely makes sense to me. Next idea is from Siemens Gamesa, and it has to do with lifetimes of wind turbines and trying to keep the whole farm operating until the end of life. And Phil, this is a really interesting concept just because it looks at the wind farm in total and the operational uh, performance of the whole farm by controlling the upstream turbines and their effect on the downstream turbines. Downstream turbines can see a lot of turbulence, obviously, so they tend to get a, have a little bit of a rougher life. And what this patent is trying to address is that lifespan. Could they organize the wind farm in a way that extends the life? And this is interesting. So what they're doing with this concept is they're looking at the amount of residual life and the expected annual energy production of individual turbines, and then they're trying to develop a park-level control system that will allow all turbines in the park um, to have the maximum park-level output um, between whatever today is and the expected end of life of, of the asset. Um, so this gives them... Um, a lot more flexibility and control over um, how to optimize power production, um, how to potentially optimize pitch control algorithms and things like that that could have an impact on the downwind turbines, yaw control algorithms, and, and wake steering that, that could be anything that might adversely impact the, the um, lifetime or lifespan of the, the downwind turbines. Um, so this is, this is very clever. Um, it's one, uh, it's not necessarily the first time that somebody's tried to come up with like a park level optimization, but it's, it's a very clever way of thinking. And I, I particularly like this for the, the style of problem solving that the, uh, the engineers behind this, the Siemens Gamesa have, have employed. Well, and our most intriguing idea of the week, uh, Lucy Barnby, uh, who is an individual inventor has a patent that proposes a unique anti-eating device. Uh, it's the face mask, and it, it's used for diet control. And it has, and if you can envision this, a, a rigid sort of cup-shaped cover that goes over your mouth and chin, kind of like a muzzle, Bill. And, and then it attaches to your head with some straps and a, has a lock. <laughs> so this is, this is kind of a stream I... I I haven't seen this in service anywhere, obviously, but uh, it, it has holes for breathing. Thank goodness, right? And, and but and on top of this, there has to be an emergency release mechanism, right? I mean, you you have to. Well, you know what, Ellen? Sometimes people need uh, you know a little extra level of control, and and so by the way, for for anyone in the audience wondering why we're talking about this kind of thing, we, what we want to be able to do is is. Um, cover a few of the um, kind of wacky ideas out there that uh, that people have had. Uh, so this is definitely towards the top of the list. Um, you'll remember if you were with us for our first episode, we talked about a motorized ice cream cone. Um, you know, this one's probably up there as uh, amongst people in the patent world as as one of their favorite uh, wackiest ideas. Uh, and you know what it. If you are familiar with this this patent at all, or you know, we're gonna show you the uh, some of the images of it, um, you, you'll get the idea pretty quick. Uh, and again, I think it was designed at a, in a time when people were potentially a little less sensitive about uh, you know how to best control overeating. There's apps out there that will control your eating. There's other things, that, but it all boils down to, like Phil said, self-control. My best trick is to have a better half who loves me and cares about my health uh, instead of having a basically chastity belt, but for my waistline. <laughs> 